Well, hello everybody. Welcome back. Jiu-Jitsu 2000 here today. I'm back and I have an interesting video for you. Right here in the back, if I zoom in, you can see that I have my UCO candle lantern just burning, just bright. It's burning on a candle that I made for it. And what's sparking the interest for this video was, uh, I believe it was the video that I did a few days ago where I was making common wax candles. I think it was the video where I was showing how to make these. There was a comment that went through and the comment was can you make candles for the UCO lanterns and the answer obviously is yes you can. As you can see uh, once again I've got them and they work just fine. Now what I've got going on here over here I've got some wax on a very low heat. I have a little stick here and this is what the UCO candles look like. This happens to be the beeswax version. This is what comes from their factory. Uh, and these guys, they last between 10 and 12 hours. Now the candles that I'm going to make, uh, they run between 6 and 8 hours. And I'm going to show you how to make them in this video. So some of the things that you'll need, you'll need some diagonal cutters or some scissors. Uh, you'll need a, what I like to use is just a, just a clothespin and then uh, some cotton string or twine it has to be 100 percent cotton and uh, it needs to be cut to a length that's slightly longer than the candle that you're trying to make so if you're making a candle about that big I recommend going you know a couple inches on either side of the candle you know you just want to be uh, not having too short of string you want to make sure you have enough string and then right here this is the magic this is the inch and a quarter uh, pipe that you find at your local hardware store this is the pipe that goes underneath your sink okay and what it, it comes a lot longer and I cut it down with a hacksaw to the length that I want the candles to be roughly okay so I cut it just slightly longer than what what I want the candles to be and then what I got here is I have a one inch PVC schedule 40 plug okay so this is inch and a quarter this thin stuff and this is one inch and they fit together perfectly just like that this is going to make the mold for us to do our candle okay so again not to reiterate too much but we got inch and a quarter under the under the sink pipe and uh, one inch schedule 40 so they fit together really nice now what I've done on this schedule 40 on this cap is I've drilled a hole right in the center and I've also taken a grinder and I kind of ground down a little spot right here and I'll show you what that spots for here in a second so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take my clothes pin and I'm just really sparingly I'm just gonna get the tip of the string here and I'm gonna come over to the wax and I'm gonna just dip this thing down in the wax and the clothes pin is just so I don't get my fingers down in there and then I'll pull it out and then I'll lay it flat on the table right here just like this hold it down for just a second and undo the clothespin and I'm just gonna let that sit and let that solidify for a little bit and in the meantime again this candle wax over here is on low heat and one more thing that I want to talk about is I have a small thing here with a blue shop towel in it this is gonna be my filter uh, because sometimes I get dog hair in the wax and dogs are out here and there might be dust flying or sawdust or something so this is just a filter so that I get a good clean product in the end so again this is what we're going to end up with so this uh, string has had a little bit of time to solidify okay it doesn't take that long but I want to go to the end here and I want to just kind of tighten this end up just twist it get it kinda tight if you have some cold water in a cup you can dip this in that cold water and it'll help solidify the thing a lot quicker so I'm gonna just push the string right through the bottom here it's still kind of soft it's not quite hard enough yet but I'm, I guess I'm kinda rushing it a little bit so I'm just going like this pushing it right through there we go and if you want you can take this off and, and access this a little easier with your fingers you can kind of pull that through and what I do here on the bottom is I just lay this down 
right here in this little spot that I created. So now you look at my wax over here. I've got a little stick in there. I'm just going to take that stick and put a couple drops of wax around the bottom of this area. And that's just to help seal that off. So when I pour my wax, I don't have uh, wax coming out of the bottom. Now the reason for this divot is so when I set this down, uh, it's flush and I don't have wax going everywhere. Okay, so that's what I'm dealing with right now. So I'm just going to stick this in here, just like this, nice and tight. And because I did this, I can set that flat. Now it's time to pour a little bit of wax. So I'm going to get my wax ready. Let's see where am I going to put this for a good camera angle. Okay, so here we go. Set this right here. And I'm going to just, just going to fold the wick out of the way for a second. And then I'm going to hold my filter here. The wax needs to be fairly warm. Uh, and I'll pour it right through here. And then here in a second, it'll start dripping through. This can be a little bit messy. Uh, you can see I have a piece of plywood here on my bench so I don't get wax everywhere. And that's all I'm doing right now. And then get your pot close so that when you get close to the top you can just kind of put this thing right on the pot and set it back on the heat. Now from here what I'm going to do is you can see I've got this thing full. This little mold is full. I'm just going to take this and pull it straight up the string, the wick, pull it straight up so that I'm looking at the center of the candle. Okay, so I'm centering my wick right here. Hopefully you can see that. Hopefully I'm giving you a good a good view. My apology for this crazy camera work right now. I'm trying to trying to show you a good angle of this. This is um this is kind of important because this is gonna be your wick. Okay, so this is what you're dealing with. So you just pull this straight up, not too hard, and then use your clamp right there. And then what that's going to do is that'll just hold that wick in place right in the center. And then you, you leave it. You leave it to sit. Okay, come back in a little while and we'll take a look and see what we have. We might want to put a little bit more wax, but we'll do that in a few minutes. After a little bit of time, you will notice that the candle will start to solidify a little bit like this. So when that happens, I like to usually fold the wick aside a little bit and I'll add a little bit more wax to top it off. So I'm going to do that right now. Same procedure. Just kind of pouring it in here. It doesn't take much because I don't need much here. It's kind of hard to see, but the wax is falling down in there. Keep my pot close. So I just want to get it somewhat close to the top of the pot, or excuse me, somewhat close to the top of the mold. And then I'll recenter the wick one more time. And this time it'll be a lot easier to recenter because it's already kind of solidified a little bit. So I'll just do that, just like that. I just kind of gently pull up on the wick and then I make sure to center this really nice. And this is the last center. And then from here, I'm just going to wait for this to solidify. And in the meantime, I've blown this one out. <clears throat> I want to show you what it looks like. Uh, once they burned quite a while you can see that they mold to the outside of the uh, candle to this aluminum housing they mold to that very well because before this is kind of what they look like here when I put them in now again if you compare this what we're making to the original the ones that we make are a little bit thinner in diameter but they work very good Okay, so that's what we're going to be uh, finishing up with. So we just pull this down, just kind of pop this. Sometimes you can push it with your thumb. And you'll notice that the top of the candle uh, conforms itself to the aluminum body as the 
heat from the candle heats up the aluminum it mold it, it molds the candle to the top okay so even though they they have a little bit of play they still work very good and they they go up in the night and then once in a while you might need to take your fingers here and just kind of break this wick down a little bit because the flame will get a little bit tall you don't have to do that very often and then we can light it up again give it a few seconds and then put that baby right back in our lantern and we're good to go so again in the meantime I'm gonna let this solidify and I'll come back and talk to you a little more show you the final steps that I like to use once your candle has had a little time to sit and you notice that the top of the wax has solidified a little bit now what we can do to help speed up the process of the wax hardening is we can set down some cool water here and we're just gonna lay this whole thing in the cool water just like that and then we'll let that sit for about five minutes and we'll come back okay it's been just short of five minutes so this is what we're dealing with so now I'm gonna take my diagonal cutters and I'm just gonna cut the string right here just cut it flush and then what I want to do on the bottom is I want to pull the bottom to where it's like this and I'm gonna cut it flush with the bottom of the cap here just like that see how it's flush and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this Thing, a little bit of a twist so I'm gonna kind of rev this thing like I'm revving the throttle on a motorcycle I'm just gonna pull very gently here and what I'm hoping that'll happen is I'm hoping that the wick will bust through here on the bottom okay so if you want to use your stick to kind of clean stuff up and make it a little bit easier for that to happen but we just want to pull if you notice that the wick is starting to pull through the top obviously we want to stop get a hold of the wick and then just pull it through because we want it to pull through this bottom part generally it works pretty good but I kinda rushed it today just for the video and the wax is still soft when the wax has had that five ten minutes you know to solidify this doesn't happen as much up here so this will pull right through no problem uh, but again I did it a little short because of the video but this is basically what's happening here is we're pulling it down like this and this is what you have okay so this is what the wax uh, will look like uh, now it's important to definitely let it sit in here for at least five maybe ten minutes let it cool okay now it's time to get the candle out of the mold so what we want to do is we want to take our thumb and just push the thumb on the back of the candle here and most times it'll just pop right through and you gotta kinda push a little bit hard nothing too crazy just kinda push it's a little bit difficult sometimes but you just push and then when you run out of thumb or thumb gets too short use your finger just kinda push the candle out and then want, try not to pull too much if you do pull just pull real gentle you don't want to pull the candle apart okay now if you're having trouble with this see it just broke a little bit but that's okay normally does that anyway if you're having trouble uh, getting this candle to come out sometimes what I do is I'll take this and I'll pour hot water from the sink over this just for a little bit and what it'll do is it'll heat up the outer diameter of this wax and it'll slide right out it'll pop right out and it works pretty good sometimes doing that so once the candle comes out what I like to do is I like to take my knife here and I just kinda 
clean up the edges just kind of clean the thing up a little bit nothing too crazy just clean it up a little bit just kind of give it a little bit of a bevel here something like that then you can do the same thing on the top of the candle just like this nothing too crazy and then let it sit let it solidify again so give it you know maybe 10 15 minutes to let it solidify don't put them in the freezer uh, to try to rush the process because what will happen generally from what I've seen is if you try to speed up the process too much uh, the wax will crack then you'll have a cracked candle so I recommend against doing that every time I've tried to do that I ended up wishing I didn't so now I'm just gonna clean it up with the rag just a little light clean and there is my candle so when I need a new candle for my lantern I just come over here pop the old one out pop the new one in now what you want to do is you want to trim the wick a little bit so I like having the wick about uh, eighth of an inch maybe put it right into here just like that put this here put that there and here we go we're gonna put that baby right there in our wick right there in our candle first lights gonna be a little bit that sound that you hear that's because we just had water on it okay so there we go it's gonna light now if you look let me blow it out real quick if you look right down in here where my finger is you'll see like a tiny little gap there don't worry about that because what will happen is as this wax uh, gets melted it'll fill all these little gaps and everything and then you'll have a nice top of the candle looking something similar to this so don't freak out too much if you have some uh, inconsistencies on the top of the candle it's not that big a deal it's gonna fix itself so just put that baby in there and now we have our candle right there burning so that's an example of what these candles look like now this one here you can see two different colors this was the bottom this was the part that was like this okay and then when I put it up so high and then I filled it a little more it's putting a different color in there Okay, two different waxes and this one over here is just burning away now while that's burning in the background I just want to show you some other options okay so th these guys right here are ready to go you can see the wicks look kinda silly that's because they're just sitting here storing but I guarantee you when I go to light these and I kinda twist the wick, the wick together just like that they go just fine uh, you can see this one kinda has like a head on the top of it that's because it like I said this one's burned for quite a bit of time it was two different types of wax it was red and then I had topped it off with like gray or something and the longer they burn uh, the more they'll make like this mushroom kinda head effect and that's uh, uh, something here so these ones here are soy wax they work real good. This, these are so just some other options. These are my beeswax ones. Beeswax is a little harder to work with. Uh, you get these cracks and stuff. Uh, beeswax is a little bit less forgiving. So beeswax is a little harder. Here's another red wax one. And again, these work really good. Beeswax. Right here. Here's some more soy. You can see a little crack right there on the top. Don't worry about things like that because like I said, when it's in the lantern, these problems up here will fix themselves over time. So just let them burn. Here's another soy. This one was one that was cut in half. This was a long one. So what you can do is you can take uh, longer pipes in different colors like red, green, you know, and you can still do stuff like that. And what I do with these long ones is I take these out on the trail with me. I throw these in my pack when I take my lantern. And then when I get out there, I just bring my knife. And I just set them on a stump and I'll just whack them, you know, wherever I want them. And then I just cut them out there in the field. 
but this is this is a, a longer candle so if you wanted some kind of pillar candles or something like that you could do that again the the beeswax is a little harder to extract so you definitely have to use the hot water method on the pipe to get these out uh, another option that you can that you can do is instead of getting a plastic pipe right here you can get the the, the steel stainless steel or the the brass or whatever and that'll heat up a little quicker and then it'll, it'll let it release a little better so when you do heat you'll see these little bubbles when you heat them up because the longer ones like this they take a little more effort to get them to release they don't release real easy they take a little more work to get them out but you can see all the different colors and options this this is a really pretty light blue color uh, here's a here's a red one just a little red one again don't worry about the top it'll fix itself red ones uh, more beeswax ones the beeswax ones I like a lot because they smell good but they are harder to make uh, it's harder to get that wax to release this, these are all beeswax and uh, these common wax ones that I made like in the video today these burn really good and they release real good because the the wax has a lot of oils in it then you got these green like kind of a Christmas candle look and then you have some white a little dog here and there with some white ones and then uh, here's like kind of a red one with a little green on the top little things like that and uh, here's some blue and then here's some kind of golf wax clear trappers wax kind of looking ones these ones are cool because they put out a lot of light they really do and they have no scent to them at all so these ones are pretty good and they're good when it's really cold you can hear that they're hard candles these little baby blue kind of turquoises color are real pretty so that's just uh, a look at some of these candles that I make I hope this uh, video helped you out please feel free to leave some comments down below like this video share this video and folks if you like the type of content that you see on my channel please subscribe I'd love to have you and until next time thanks again for watching appreciate you stopping by and uh, have a beautiful day now get out there and make yourself some candles for your UCO lanterns they're good lanterns they really are so I'm gonna add all these new ones uh, to this bucket I just keep this bucket of them so whenever I go on a trip I come over here and I grab a couple of them and then I take off now again here's the original this is the original looks a little bit you know the one I make is almost the same my wicks are a little bit thicker than what they use uh, but and then if you want to compare the diameters of the uh, candles you look at theirs and it's let's see what is that let's start about right there they're about an inch and a quarter yeah right around an inch and a quarter and mine like an inch and an eighth so mine are about an eighth of an inch uh, thinner in diameter but they work just as good if not better and it's the same thing this one here was cut this was a long one that I cut so here would be the wick that we would light so anyway folks I want to say thank you for joining me today on this video on how to make UCO type candles for your lantern I hope you got some good useful information out of this video please feel free to leave your comments down below like this video share this video and if you like the type of content that you see on my channel please subscribe I'd love to have you and until next time folks thanks again for watching have a beautiful day let me show you one more example before I go so you know we got these little bit longer ones like this and then look at this guy this guy's long when you make the long ones like this they're they're difficult to get out of the pipe and it's hard keeping that wick straight all the way through you have to set it down you gotta pull up real hard against that wick and sometimes the wick will start slipping up but you can see right here the wicks gotten a little close to the surface right here so that'll be causing some problems later but nothing significant but that's what we got. Those are our UCO candles. Thanks for watching.
Bye bye now. They work great. Later.